Hey guys, it's Yuta. So, there's a 2021 anime that was particularly controversial in Japan. And that's Higehiro o Higeosoru, soshite joshi kousei o hiro. The main character is Yoshida, a 27 year old guy. One day, on his way back home, he finds a runaway high school girl, Sayu. She has no place to go and she offers him sex in exchange for accommodation. He refuses her offer but decides to let her stay nonetheless. The arrangement is supposed to be short term, but she ends up staying there for much, much longer. You can see this is a very tricky situation, and there are a few interesting things about how people reacted to this anime. First, Japanese people seem to be quite divided on this. Some people rave about it, but other people are completely repulsed by it. If you take a look at the reviews, there are many 5-star reviews, but there's also many one-star reviews, so you can see how divided this is. Also, it doesn't seem as controversial with Western anime fans. In fact, it's one of the most popular anime of the season. So, why is this anime so controversial in Japan? First thing you should know that it's actually illegal in Japan to let a minor stay at your place, even if it's consensual, because it's considered a form of kidnapping. It doesn't really matter what happens or what doesn't happen. At the same time, the police won't come and get you unless somebody reports you. This is actually not super rare in real life and people do get arrested for this because usually parents report to the police. And since it's illegal, a lot of people criticize this anime for it. It seems that they want to create a beautiful story, but this is a complete crime. The content may encourage crime. But this is fiction, and there are so many anime where characters commit illegal activities, such as murder. So a lot of people also defend this anime. What about murder in movies? What about theft in novels? What about violence in games? So you can see reviewers are disagreeing with each other. And there's actually a lot of inappropriate reviews which I won't translate, so if you want to read them, you need to learn Japanese. And if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will teach you the kind of Japanese the real-life Japanese people today actually speak, which can be different from the kind of Japanese that textbooks and apps teach you. So click the link in the description and subscribe. But think about anime where characters kill people or monsters. There's usually some consequence, or maybe it's kind of justifiable. But in this anime, characters kind of gloss over the fact that it's illegal in Japan. Even in fiction, characters who commit criminal acts or lack ethical values are usually portrayed as evil, necessary evil, or dark heroes in the work. Even Luffy, who is passionate about moral obligation and righteousness, is portrayed as a pirate and a wanted criminal in the story. Another reviewer says, Some may think, So what's the problem with this work? It's fiction, so it's okay, isn't it? But this is not the case in this work. That's because in this work, the words crime, kidnapping of a minor, and abduction hardly appear. And there is no psychological depiction that the characters, including the main character, recognize the act of picking up an underage runaway girl as a crime. But there's actually one character who clearly recognizes this as a crime, and that's Yaguchi, the douchebag. But since he's kind of a villain, his words aren't taken very seriously. On top of that, Higekiro portrays Yoshida, the main character, as a heroic figure and make the story heartwarming. A lot of people question that perspective. I have my doubts about this kind of content being portrayed as a beautiful story or as pure love. I can't really have a good feeling about it. Another common talking point is that Yoshida is quite preachy and acts as though he has the moral high ground, despite his incriminating behavior. The main character of the story always acts superior to the high school girl he picked up. And on the first day he finds her, he says, I'm going to let you stay here until you fix your spoiled spirit, as if he's a decent adult. But then again, what should he do? Just ignore her 
or report her to the police? What if her home isn't safe and she shouldn't go back there? Is it really wrong to help her? A lot of people bring up these points. If the main character abandons the high school girl, it is highly unlikely that she will be picked up again by someone who has the same reasonable mind and moderation as the main character. Even for this main character, if he was sober, he would not have picked her up. Another reviewer says that the anime does in fact address the problems of the situation. Staying in a stranger's house is a tremendous risk. If you can avoid doing that, there is no need to do it at all. But I want you to know that there are children who have no choice but to do so. In this anime, the risks of staying at somebody else's house are also well described. It also mentions the social dangers of letting people stay in your house. But as I said, a lot of characters don't seem to take this very seriously. Another common criticism is that this is just an unrealistic male fantasy. I watched the first episode. It's like a man's fantasy in full swing. And even from a male perspective, it was gross. But if you bring up unrealistic male fantasies, a lot of anime fall into this category. How many guys do you know who tutor cute quintuplets, all of whom magically fall in love with him? Do you know a passive nerdy guy who has a sexy kohai girl who follows him around, teases him in suggestive ways, and gets him into serendipitously sexy accidents? Quite unlikely. So this is not just about unrealistic male fantasies. There's something else that many people find repulsive. To explore the reason, I'd like to compare this anime to another anime, Koikimo or Koi to Yobu ni wa Kimochi Warui. This also involves a grown man and a high school girl. Ryo, the fuckboy, falls in love with Ichika, your regular weeb high school girl. He starts pursuing her quite aggressively, but his interest in her seems sincere. This is a rom-com, so you already know where this is going. This is by no means a critically acclaimed anime, but it has slightly higher ratings and the reviews are not divided like Higehiro. So how's this anime different? The biggest problem of Koikimo is age. Courting a high school girl isn't illegal, but many people find it inappropriate. But apart from that, this could just be a regular romantic comedy. If the girl was a couple of years older, there wouldn't be any problem. There's no underlying social issues. This is just a romantic comedy. But Higehiro, it's different. Just think if everything would be completely fine if she was not a minor. I think many people would still be unhappy. And one of the reasons is the transactional nature of their relationship, at least in the beginning. Even though Yoshida didn't accept Sayu's sexual offer, being young and pretty played a huge role, as he admits in the later episode. In a way, you could say that he's using not having sex as a way to hide his attraction to Sayu. Despite his claim that he's into Goto, his sexy senpai, which was true, at least initially, it became apparent that he spends more time thinking about Sayu. So there's a lot of transactional elements in this. Even if both were consenting adults, some people will always think that transactional relationships are morally wrong. Do you guys remember this anime Rent a Girlfriend? Many people didn't like it because of the transactional nature of the concept, even though there were no legal issues. So it's understandable that with Higehiro, many people have issues with the transactional relationship with a minor. I find the premise of this anime quite interesting because it's about real social issues. But the anime didn't quite meet my expectations. I find the characters quite naive for this kind of story, and I'm too cynical to accept the narrative that Yoshida saves a runaway girl and gets praised for it. But most of all, I wanted this anime to actually address the complex issues surrounding runaway girls. These are real life issues involving not just the girls, but also their families and sometimes poverty and mental health. There's also legal issues you can explore. There are many ways to create a story about sensitive issues. For example, I find shoplifters did this very well. So if you want to learn more about social issues, 
This anime won't do a very good job. You need to do research in Japanese. And if you want to learn Japanese with me, I will teach you the kind of Japanese that real life Japanese people today actually speak, which can be different from the kind of Japanese that textbooks and apps teach you because they can be unnatural and outdated. So click the link and subscribe to my email group, Japanese with Yuza. Alright, see you guys soon. Ciao, ciao.